Hey, welcome back. Um, so I'll catch you up to speed real quick here. There's been a little bit of a delay in the build. Um, a couple of things came up and happened. Uh, one accountability thing is I made a messy, uh, made a couple of messy holes. So uh, off camera, I went and set this up to be match drilled, this piece of angle iron here uh, for a portion later on, which is where I'm going to be uh, pro sealing two of the, uh, both of those skins together at that, at that uh, profile for the trailing edge. Uh, but anyways, when I went to match drill it to this, I had conveniently uh, kind of spaced it every, I think it went like every four or so, or every five or so holes, and kind of match drilled it through, clear coated it, match drilled it through, clear coated it, and went down the line. And not knowing, a couple of those holes that I did uh, were perpendicular to the table and not perpendicular to the profile of the skin. Um, not sure if that makes sense or not, but what happened was. Uh, let's see, what happened was, you'll see, I'm trying to see if this will focus here. The hole basically ended up getting ob oblong, uh, like an oval looking shape, like it, it came in at, a, at an angle. It could have been fine, uh, but it did enlarge the hole at an, at an amount that I was not comfortable with, uh, just knowing that this will have some stresses on it in the future and I really want to make sure that it doesn't rip out and fall out of the sky. Um, so anyways, I put this on hold for quite a while. Um, while I was trying to figure out what to do and thankfully Van's uh, builder support line was able to uh, talk me off the ledge there and just said go up a size and rivet. So I went back through, I found the, the culprits, so you can see it's probably easier to get access to. Found the culprits um, and circled them, identified them and uh, matched drilled them to one size larger of a rivet. So these are each going to be 1 8 inch rivets. Um, you can see I already went through and dimpled them, just did it all at once, that way I don't put the wrong dimple there. Um, but should be fine, it'll kind of be a pain to have to do, to have to, um, to do that, uh, that bucking method on these skins, which we'll get to in another video. Um, it'll be a little bit of a pain, but it's nice to know I don't have to fully replace each of my skins as well as that, uh, that inner support piece, uh, so we'll be able to move forward. And then another part, part with the build, I've been waiting on Vans to send Pro Seal. I ordered it a little bit earlier in the month, uh, but it turns out I guess they had a couple of delays or some delays that came up with the shipping department. They said something about a power outage, which is always no good, uh, but they said it should ship out this next Monday. Um, so probably the next video then we'll have uh, Pro Sealing things together. Um, but other than that, it should be smooth sailing. We'll get to um, the rest of the dimples here for the build. Um, yeah follow along and uh, we'll make a quick little time lapse of the, the whole process here of finishing dimpling these skins and we'll go ahead and get this all prepped here. And then again, just to recap, if anyone uh, who's not a builder is watching this video here, uh, family, friends, I am building the rudder. Um, so you'll see the rudder is kind of mocked up here with uh, these, uh, these Clicos, these temporary fasteners. So I'll be pulling him apart to get that all dimpled and ready to rivet. Uh, but yeah, we'll be getting... Uh, getting more and more stuff ready for the, uh, the rudder here.
So now this uh, material here is about as thick as that skin. Uh, so I put a test dimple on it. You'll see now the dimple fits right on right there. there. Alrighty, so I am incredibly pleased with the results. Uh, quick recap, we just got done machine countersinking the, uh, the trailing edge portion. And the way I did it, which I would totally do this again, um, I luckily had a lot of this stuff left over when we moved, in, moved into our house here. The previous owners had carpet, so there was a lot of leftover, um, leftover uh, uh, what are these, thresholds or whatever these are, little threshold strips that go over uh, to make that transition strip into carpet. Anyways, a bunch of them left over, and I held on to them, and it worked out absolutely perfectly. So um, it gives you just enough room for the uh, the uh, Clecos to have just enough room to stand off to where they're not interfering with the uh, with the wood surface here when it's Cleco down. And then the other thing is the angle really really matches up nice against uh, against the angle here to where you're really not holding it at an awkward angle. Um, it it actually ends up getting dang near uh, level, uh, which is super nice. So able to go through and use that as a guide. So yeah, summed up, this was incredibly useful to have. It worked really well to, to guide the countersink bit through these holes into, into this thicker material uh, to keep it firm and, uh, and straight there. And then I also went ahead and uh, after I finished all of it, I had my oopsie ones, the ones where I had to drill it up to a 1 8 inch rivet, so those four, or those two, and then uh, these two here. Had to do those, so I moved one hole up to a 1 8 inch hole size. And then went ahead and did the same thing with a uh, with a larger countersink bit for the one eighth inch bit. Um, marked it just in case if I use this again in the future. I don't know if how often we'll be doing uh, these trailing edges. I assume quite a bit. Uh, but anyways, marked it so that way I don't screw something up in the future. Uh, but yeah, if I was to do this again, I would give that five out of five stars. I would uh, I would do that again. All right, so we're back at things again. Um, so you'll notice that I went ahead and primed everything. I know I probably said earlier on in the beginning that I would not be priming things, but I figured I had some time. Um, so I knocked out some priming. So she used some self-etching primer. I used previously on some of these parts, uh, the Rust-Oleum version. This is very, very similar. The only difference that I found is the actual, if I can get through the child-proof thing, um, the actual tip itself is nicer on these Dupacolor ones. You can get these at Napa, um, but the reason why it's nicer is it has this little red tip there, uh, which allows you to change the spray pattern uh, for spraying up and down or left and right, um, just depending on where you want to go. So it fans out a different direction. Super, super tangent here, but I did go ahead and prime just because I know that I'm not going to be able to get to the inside of this surface after I seal everything up, uh, since it will be the rudder, and it's, I assume I'm not going to be able to get inside. I could be wrong though, but just given how small, thin profile it is, I figured I had the time to spend $10 on a can of primer and just hit everything and forget about it. So I'm gonna clean up real quick and we'll get ready for riveting. So yeah, we'll, we'll actually be able to put some, uh, put some rivets in pieces and start making airplane parts. So let's get to it. Next up is going to be back riveting. You'll see here that I did end up um, making a little insert in the table here for the back riveting plate. My worry was that if I just put the plate on the surface itself, 
I may find myself wandering off and putting a nice, perfectly straight crease in the material. So I went super overkill, um, ended up actually drilling a hole in the middle of this because it had a little bit of a bow. So I drilled a hole in the middle of the piece of steel here, countersunk that hole for a wood bit, and then sunk that into this, uh, this uh, cross member here to pull the bow out of this uh, back riveting plate, this material here to make it perfectly flat. And then went after it afterwards uh, with, the, with the welder and welded over the top, sanded that smooth and flush. Um, so super overkill. I don't think you have to go to this extent, but I was having fun uh, playing with the welder, which is always super fun to do. So I've not used, I, I may have actually, used, yeah, I've used this before. There's little scratches on it. Uh, but I'm not sure if I mentioned in a previous video or not when I did use it. Uh, but what a back riveter attachment does on the rivet gun here is it has this little spring-loaded doodad uh, who kind of stands around that and keeps it in place as the stance is around and makes that smush through. I can see how you can get used to the sound of it. Um, it does have a, uh, as it dies off and squishes out, it has a different different tone to it. I don't know if you notice it on the camera or not. Um, but I can see how, why so many people like back riveting. Because I deal, or the, uh, supposedly the back side here will look perfect. So we'll see if that's actually true. Oh, heck yeah. Not sure if you can see that or not, uh, but those are far better, uh, far better rivets than when you do it um, on the other side. When you, when you have to buck them from this side, it can kind of uh, morph the material there a little bit. Um, but this lets it be perfectly smooth. That is absolutely beautiful. So cool. truth is this tape any better let me get this music paused that's good oh night and day difference okay if you're gonna get blue painters tape um, this stuff is much better than Harbor Freight again this is 3m sharp lines number 2093 um, I just had one little tag in and a dimple, but man, the other stuff, um, I know it didn't do it when I went to pull off the tape, but it kept doing that, <laughs> kept doing that splinter thing where, um, you keep having to go back and start a new, new peel. There's one. Yeah, this is much better, much better than that other, other painter tape from Harbor Freight. This one I could probably buck, and this is the one that is notorious uh, for being a pain in the butt to get done, uh, at least according to the forums and YouTube videos I've seen from just about everybody who's built one of these. Um, I think I know how I'll handle him though. I think I'll use uh, a chisel, I think, as like a uh, leveraged bucking bar. And then this one, I'm not sure what I can do here, but you can probably see that the... Uh, this dude out here is just a little bit in the way where if I was to, to hit it, it would be uh, too much of an angle. 
So I'm going to think this through before I do something that I'll regret. So we're back. It is another day. Uh, I lost camera battery right near the end there. I think I had probably just a, a little bit more to go, um, but I was able to successfully uh, fully set this rivet here. And then this last one here definitely was a pain in the butt, uh, but it did end up working out. I used the chisel method, uh, which was a pain, took a very, very long time. I really, really work hard on the, the rivets during the process because it was a definite pain. Uh, but I don't see any cracking on them, don't see any issues, which is awesome. It did slide off the edge ever so slightly at the very end there when I was giving it one last, uh, one last hoorah. And it, uh, yeah, it has the, the slightest amount, it probably won't get on frame, uh, but it has this, the slightest little angle on the side. I'm not worried about it, it's not cracked or anything, it just got a nice little, little sideways indent on the, uh, on the top portion of it. But it still has bite all the way around, still within tolerance according to that little, uh, little gauge tool. So that one worked out well. This one over here, equally a pain in the butt. Um, and it looks like it'd be something that'd be really easy to get to, but it wasn't. Um, just this angle here was deflecting the uh, pneumatic squeezer away. This bottom part of the horn was doing the same thing where it was pushing the pneumatic squeezer away. So I really had no easy way to get to it. The uh, I did try to buck it and wasn't happy with it. There was really no clear way to buck it. You don't have enough room there to get at it with the uh, with the flathead on that on the um, rivet gun. And then I tried to do it from the backside using an offset um, uh, the offset tool on it, and uh, it's not meant for this kind of a thing. Um, and sure enough, it didn't work right. So I did end up just going through and using a blind rivet. Uh, which I think is what I saw a few people do on the forums is put a blind rivet there. It's not a structural um, or major uh, critical critical rivet there. So it'll, it's a, it'll be one little blind rivet there. I know I'll end up using one on the other side when I put these two together. So it'll be matching. I'll have one blind rivet on each side. Um, and then if I really, if it really bothers me, I can throw a little, throw a little JB Weld in it or something and uh, make it look like a, a, a standard rivet before we uh, go to paint it. You will never know except for you viewers. Um, so next up is going to be putting these these top plates in here and getting those those pop pop riveted together. That is a wrap. All these are pop riveted together, ready to move on to the next step. Next step will involve using Pro Seal, uh, which if you aren't uh, aware, is a kind of like a. No, oh, I'll go over it in the next video. Um, it's really like a um, like a nasty, sticky version of JB Weld sealant stuff that I'll be uh, joining skins with. So we'll do that in the next video. Probably get my wife Amanda involved, which would be fun. Be fun couples night. Um, but yeah, if you made it this far, really appreciate you watching. Hit that like button if you like the video. It lets me know you like the that you like the content, um, and then also helps it to get out to other viewers on the interwebs. Uh, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell if you want to be notified anytime I upload videos. And yeah, feel free if you have any questions, comments, feedback, concerns, or you just want to say hi, say hi in the comments down below. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.